with a heavy German accent. And, but he was a picture of integrity, and so when he would draw the redistricting lines to, to, to work with the census, uh, it was always fairly, it was pretty fair and nonpartisan. That all changed uh, in 2011, and it changed in a huge way. As you all know, in 2010, uh, the Republicans gained total power of everything in Wisconsin. The governorship, both houses of the Wisconsin legislature. And yeah, the Supreme Court. At, well, in the Supreme Court, although that was a process that had been, uh, been building up by, even prior to the uh, 2010 elections. And what happened was that the, um, uh, the uh, redistricting process uh, was or became the most hyper-partisan, certainly in Wisconsin's history and, and, and maybe in the country in 2011. Uh, it was certainly the most secretive. Uh, as you may know, uh, the redistricting maps that were released in July of 2011 uh, were not released until they were ready to be ran through the Wisconsin legislature. Uh, in addition, it was an expensive pro process for you, the taxpayers of Wisconsin. Uh, the money is still being paid out to lawyers. It's over $2.1 million uh, that your tax money was utilized to pay for uh, a process that reduced the number of competitive seats in Wisconsin. Uh, by a huge amount, we'll discuss that in a minute, uh, but in addition uh, has created a legislature that, in addition to being hyper-partisan, is also less responsive, um, I would argue could care less about what most of the citizens uh, think about it, uh, because they've drawn districts in such a way that most of them uh, will never have to worry about losing their seat in the general election. And so what's happened is, um, and again, a process that began before 2010, but has certainly accelerated since that time, you have a process where most state legislative and congressional elections in Wisconsin are now decided in the partisan primary, not the general election. Because the uh, districts, again, have been drawn in such a way that there's not real competition between the two major parties, let alone third parties, and we don't have a chance, uh, but certainly amongst the two major parties. And so all the action is in the primary, and as you know, uh, what tends to happen in partisan primaries is that the folks who are in the Republican Party, more conservative, even radically conservative, tend to uh, win in the primary. Uh, same thing, though, is true in the Democratic Party. Uh, there's very few moderate Democrats anymore in Wisconsin. There used to be, 25, 30 years ago, uh, Democrats who were more middle of the road, as you know, in the Milwaukee area, some of the Catholic areas around Wisconsin, a number of Democrats were pro-life Democrats. You don't see that anymore. It's all, so you have a pretty homogenous uh, ideology on both the left and in the right, and what that means is that uh, the folks in the middle are no longer there, or the folks that used to be in the middle have now become so fearful of being challenged on their right or their left that they've adhered to the more extreme ideology of each of their political parties, and so we don't have bipartisan compromise very much anymore in Wisconsin. These, these are things that I, I'm sure you sense and realize. And so what happened was that it was also the first uh, redistricting process, as I said before, where you had one political party in charge of all the levers. And they did what you would have expected they, them to do, and it wasn't isolated to Wisconsin. This happened in Pennsylvania, it happened in Ohio, it happened in Michigan. It happened in a number of other states across the country where the Republicans, as a result of a big victory in 2010, took over all the levers of government. And in all of those states, they pushed through a very hyper-partisan redistricting process. Now, redistricting reform in Wisconsin had always been kind of an issue uh, prior to 2011. 
It was something that certainly my organization and other organizations talked about, uh, but it was never really, there was people never sensed the, a real urgency about it. And so uh, in 2011, that urgency, the Republicans would say, uh, came as a result of the fact that now the Democrats were totally out of power. Uh, but that's really not the reason for the urgency. The urgency was because the process that occurred in 2011 uh, was such a drastic, over-the-top process in terms of the secrecy, uh, the lack of uh, transparency, uh, the cost to taxpayers, and the, the, the reduction in the res a number of competitive districts in Wisconsin. So reformers in 2011, uh, and then really more urgently through 2011 and 2012, uh, began to look at what we could do about this process. And the process, as we looked around the country to see what other uh, states were doing, uh, it became clear to uh, former state representative Spencer Black, no longer in the, in the legislature, but uh, who had been a leader on, on redistricting reform, and a number of others, that probably the best fit for Wisconsin would be what our neighbors in Iowa did. And what our neighbors, by the way, in Iowa did in 1980, uh, that's now been in place for four uh, redistricting processes uh, that they did in 1980 under a Republican governor and under both houses uh, in control of the Republicans. And the reason they did it in Iowa in 1980 was because they were concerned about the fact that the maps that they had been drawing uh, would go to the courts and the courts would make some changes, but also they were concerned about the fact that many of the people in Iowa uh, sense that there was a partisanship uh, factor in Iowa uh, about that, and the Republican legislators and the governor felt that that was not in their interest or the interest of the citizens of Iowa. Imagine, imagine today if uh, our legislators were concerned about whether or not the citizens of the state thought they were being too partisan. And you could say it was maybe a different time. It was the 19, early, late 1970s, early 1980s, but it was certainly a different mindset. And so what Iowa did, without, you know, without huge, you know, parades to the Capitol or, or anything else, but really more because they thought, well, we need to do something to, to, to get citizen confidence in how we draw these lines every 10 years, uh, was they decided to delegate the process, the actual line drawing process, take it out of their own direct hands, still retain the ability to vote up or down for the maps that were drawn, but they gave it to their legislative services agency. And in Iowa, like Wisconsin, uh, it was a highly developed, very, very intelligent, uh, but nonpartisan state worker corps of individuals who were, who were commended to write the maps using some very strict criteria. And the criteria were that you should try to keep communities together, keep communities of interest, towns, keep counties together. Squares are good. Rectangles are good. Lizards, snakes, not so much. Uh, the other thing that they were commended to do was to draw districts that were not uh, that, that did, where the considerations of past elections were not taken into account. So there was no partisan calculation as to how the districts would be drawn. The districts were to be drawn by shifts in population, but to the extent possible you kept the cities, the counties, communities of interest intact. As a result of that, not something that was in the criteria, the, one of the criteria was not drawing competitive districts, but as a result of do, following the other criteria, competition became embedded in the Iowa system and is to this day. It's not one of the criteria that is directed that the Legislative Services Bureau in Iowa has to use to draw the maps, but it is the result. And by the way, here's the other great thing. In Iowa, they made no provision for 
where the legislator lived, whether it was a congressman, a state senator, or a state representative. If in drawing the maps, that the domicile of the legislator was outside of the district, well, they would have to move into the district and run, or they would have to run in another district.